Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated in God's presence, and it's a great joy to have you again today <clears throat> in the presence of the Lord. I believe that tonight God will do something special, something unique, and something lasting in your life, that God will pour something into your life that will enable to live victoriously for the rest of your life. I will teach uh, for the next 40 to 45 minutes, and then I will spend time to pray for, uh, for, for you, and I trust that God will release something into your life, into your spirit, that will give you clarity. One of the things I'm, going, I'm believing God for is that you will develop the capacity to hear from God. You will develop the capacity to hear from God. When you, you develop that capacity, all other things fall into place because you know how to hear from God and how to follow him and obey him. I'm continuing from where I left off yesterday, speaking on lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. The higher we go in life, the more critical our decisions are. As we rise in life, as we rise in leadership, our decision-making systems must be sharper and more accurate. When you are <clears throat> a single person and you make decisions, the impact of it most likely is just you. So if the decision is bad, you are the only one who suffers. When you marry, your decisions begin to impact on the, your spouse. When you have children, your decisions impact on your spouse and your children. When you are a pastor, your decision impacts on your members. And, and so and so forth. So as God lifts you in leadership, which I believe he is lifting you in leadership, you have to have a sure way of making decisions. And the surest way of doing that is to be able to hear from God. And I'm going, hopefully between today and tomorrow, I will be able to give you enough for you to have the tools to hear from God. The way God gives guidance to his people in the Bible differs from the Old Testament and the New Testament. So the way God guided people in the Old Testament is not the same way he guides his people in the New Testament. Now, I'm going to say something that is very important and I hope that you would keep that in mind in all your Christian life. You see, Christians have one book we call the Bible. And uh, for us, is from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible, it's complete. That's why it has beginning and end. We can't add to it, we can't subtract from it. We live our lives by the Bible. All right? Now, when you take your Bible, you'll find that it has two main sections. The Old Testament section and the New Testament section. The Old Testament is from Genesis to Malachi, 39 books. The New Testament from Matthew to Revelation, 27 books, making 66 now, all of them, everything in there is the word of God, but not everything in there is for the life of the believer. It is the word of God, but not everything in there is for the life of the believer. Uh, for example, if you read in the Bible that Solomon married 700 and 300, it's in the Bible, but it's not for the believer. Or that Abraham had a child with his maidservant. He's a champion of faith. It's in the Bible. 
but it's not for the believer. Don't go and have a child with your maid. So you find there are things in the Bible, they are written, they are the inspired word of God, but not everything is for the life of the believer because some of the parts of the Bible is for our correction. Some is for our rebuke and some for our instruction. Now, if you don't understand that, you will mix everything together and begin to obey things you have seen in the Bible which are not for you. All right? Now, one of the most important things is to know that the Old Testament is in the Bible, the New Testament is in the Bible, but they don't have equal influence over the life of the believer. They don't have equal influence. And I'm going to base much of what I say today on that. The way God led people in the Old Testament is not the same way he leads people in the New Testament. We are in the New Testament era. So sometimes you can hear somebody who say, well, it's in the Bible. You look, read your Bible. It's there, isn't it there? It's black and white. Yes, it's there, but who is it for? You have to be able to rightly design the word of truth. So the way God led people in the Old Testament, you find it in the Bible. And I'm going to show you the Old Testament. I'm going to show you the New Testament. And I'm going to show you how God wants to lead you now. Is that okay for you? All right. So follow me closely. We're going to start from the Old Testament. And we're starting with the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 27 verse 18 to 21 numbers chapter 27 verse 18 to 21 genesis exodus leviticus numbers that's the fourth book of the bible so stay close to the early part of your bible numbers chapter 27 verse 18 to 21 I like it when I mention the Bible reading that you, you would open something and read. Is that okay for me? I don't like when I'm reading the Bible, people are looking at my face. Because I'm not the Bible. Now, everybody must come to church with a Bible. These days, it's so easy. Because I see people with iPads and iPhones. And you can load the Bible on it. So that when the Bible reference is made, you read it so you know the preacher is not just saying something from his head. We come to study the word of God. So Numbers chapter 27, verse 18 to 21. Look into your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, look over somebody's shoulder. And look at what they've opened. But I want everybody to be in Numbers chapter 27. Are you there? Okay, from verse 18. And it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay your hand on him, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and inaugurate him in their sight. Verse 20. And you shall give some of your authority to him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. Verse 21, this is where I'm getting to. He shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall inquire before the Lord for him by the judgment of the Urim. At his word they shall go out, at his word they shall come in, and he and all the children of Israel, with, of Israel with him or the congregation but the part I want you to note is the first part of verse 21 he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall inquire before the Lord for him by the judgment of the Urim now God is saying bring Joshua Moses anoint Joshua to become the leader of Israel if Joshua wants to make a decision he has to go to Eleazar, the priest. Eleazar is a high priest. And he shall inquire of the Lord from Eleazar. In other words, Joshua cannot just come up and say, God spoke to me. Joshua, if he wants to make a decision, must go to the priest.
priest to find out what is God saying. And when he goes to the priest to Eleazar, Eleazar will inquire of the Lord by the Urim. Urim. Now, yesterday I mentioned it briefly. The Urim and the Tumim. They were implements in the attire of the high priest by which he inquired of the Lord. So if Joshua goes to inquire from Eleazar and says, what is God saying? Eleazar will not just get up and say, this is what God is saying. He will go and inquire through the Urim and the Tumim, and through that, he will be able to know what God is saying. So the first way that people inquired of the Lord in the Old Testament was through the priest. Are you following me? Now, go to 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 8 and 9. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 8 and 9. This is when Saul is looking for his father's lost donkeys. And they come to the city of Ramah. And the servant of Saul speaks to him. And this is what he says. He says, the Bible says, And the servant answered Saul again and said, Look! I have here at hand one fourth of a shekel of silver. I will give that to the man of God to tell us our way. Verse 9. Formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, he spoke thus. Come, let us go to the seer. For he who is now called a prophet was formerly called a seer. So, these ways, the priest, you go to him. He gives you the Urim and the Tumim to know the will of God. Then the second way is the prophet. The prophet, the Bible says, was also called a seer. And the reason he's called a seer is very simple. It's because he sees. So if you wanted to know the will of God, you go to the prophet. And the prophet will say, I see this about you. I see that about you. I see this about you. I saw you. I see that. I see that. I see that. He's a seer. That's all. So, the priest and the prophet were the certified means by which people inquired of God. They go to the prophet and they go to the priest. So, if you lived under the Old Testament in Israel, if you were going to uh, make a decision, for example, Saul is looking for his father's donkeys. He doesn't Google it. If you want to find your father's donkeys, you don't go to the temple to pray. Lord, show me where the donkeys are. You go and look for a prophet and say, well, my donkeys are missing. Where are they? And he will see and say, well, your donkeys are in such and such a place. Or I want to go and do business. What should I do? The prophet will see and tell you what to do. And if you went to the prophet, he will see for you. You went to the priest, he will consult the Urim and the Tumim and tell you what God is saying. Two ways by which people knew the will of God. It's there clear in the Bible, in the Old Testament. But something began to happen. The Urim and the Tumim and the prophets were there, but God indicated that things were going to change. That the time was going to come when you needed direction, you didn't need to go to the priest or to the prophet. The system was going to change. By the way, if, if you understand uh, what I just taught, then you would understand why when Saul was going to battle and the Bible says no prophet was giving him, uh, the prophets were not seeing anything and the priests were not telling him anything, he realized get closed. There's no way I can know anything about the future because the priests are not giving me any uh, word and the prophet is not dreaming or seeing anything. So to Saul, there was no way to know the will of God except to go to a witch. Are you following me? All right. But God began to indicate that that system was about to change. And I want us to look at how God 
said it. He started promising right in the Old Testament itself. He started speaking about something. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 to 27. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. God began to speak. And this is what God promised Israel. It was part of the restoration he was giving them after they had gone into captivity. He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my commandments, my judgments and do them. God says a time is going to come when I will put my spirit within you and when I put my spirit within you, what the priest used to do to show you the judgment of the Lord, my spirit within you will show you the judgment of the Lord. So what God is saying is a time is going to come. Uh, you don't need to go to the priest to say, what is the judgment of the Lord for him to inquire of the Urim and the Thummim? My spirit is going to come inside you and when my spirit comes inside you, you will know the judgment of the Lord. All right. Now, Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. This is a promise that Joel made. Joel is a prophet. It says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. On how much of the flesh? All flesh. Are you flesh, by the way? Okay. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my maidservants and on my maidservants, I'll pour out my spirit in those days. Do you see what God is saying? God is saying, in the past, the prophet is the one I give my spirit to that he can see and prophesy and so on. But a new time is coming. I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now, he didn't say your sons and daughters who are prophets shall prophesy. He says your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And God says, well, for the avoidance of doubt, this is not just coming to the sons and daughters. Your old men shall dream dreams. And you say, well, it's for the old men. He says, on the, my maid servants, I'll pour out my spirit. God has covered all the bases. Old, young, bond, free, social strata, age, gender, all covered. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Now, if you remember your Bible well, on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, this is exactly what Peter quoted. And Peter was saying, what Joel talked about then has now happened. What, what Peter is saying is, we have entered the era Joel spoke about. And in this era, God has poured out his spirit on all flesh. So it's not only the Old Testament prophet who prophesies and all of us obey, but he says, your sons and your daughters, your old men and then young old, uh, old women, the maid servants shall also receive this impartation. By the coming of the Holy Spirit, God's guidance system changes. It changes from the priest and the prophet to all flesh. Now, when he says all flesh, it doesn't necessarily mean all human beings. He's talking about all flesh in the context of every human being that is giving their lives to Jesus Christ. Because Romans chapter 8, verse 14, 
clarifies this. It says, as many as, as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, you can paraphrase it to say, the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. If you are a child of God, you are led by the Spirit of God. How does he lead you? Not by the priest or by the prophet, but by the impouring of his Spirit within you. So, by this, not only do you receive the Holy Spirit, but everyone becomes a seer. Everyone who has the Holy Spirit is a seer. Somebody say, I'm a seer. Yes. Why are you a seer? Because the Holy Spirit, the great revealer, lives inside you. And he says when he comes, your old men shall dream dreams, sons and daughters shall prophesy, young men shall see visions, men servants, maid servants, all of them, everybody is in there. Everybody. So, what is God saying? God is saying, my guidance spirit is available to all. Under the New Testament, all can be led by God. It's not only for priests and prophets. All can be led by God. And how does God do that? Through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And through the believer's own new spirit. What happens when we become believers is that the old spirit in us, which was not in tune with God, gives way to a new spirit that is alive unto God. And not only that, God also brings the Holy Spirit to live inside you. So there are two things in the believer. The new spirit of the believer and the Holy Spirit. The new spirit of the believer is on the same wavelength with the Holy Spirit. It's like somebody who uses a walkie-talkie and is in tune with a broadcast system from the headquarters. The new spirit in you is the walkie-talkie. The broadcaster is the Holy Spirit. When he sends signals, because you are on the same wavelength with him, you can hear whatever the Holy Spirit is saying. You can hear. Now, this is available for every believer, but what has happened is because when we read the Bible, we still see the Old Testament example. It is there in the Bible, so you still read, and we read the Bible, we read from Ezekiel, and we read all this, and we read all the examples of people who want to know the will of God, they go to consult a prophet in the Old Testament. Because we still see it, the Holy Spirit has now become an excess baggage in the life of the believer. Sitting down there doing nothing. Because the believer still wants to know the will of God by consulting the priest and consulting the prophet. But the great revealer is sitting inside of you. Now if you never activate his presence in your life, you will never hear him speak. It doesn't mean he's not speaking. But you never hear him speak. Now, I, whilst, whilst we are here, do you know there are about a billion voices speaking in this room? Radio waves from China, from Russia, from England, from France, from Italy, from Ghana, all of them, they are all here. But none of us is hearing that. Does it mean they are not speaking? They are speaking. Don't you have a device to connect? You have. But you were told when you are coming to service that turn off that device. You can't turn on your radio in church. But the voices are there. When you step out of here, you turn on your radio or your wireless or whatever listening device you have. You can tune in to all the voices. These days, most of us on our cell phone, we can re listen to radio programs from everywhere in the world. Everywhere. But when you shut off your phone, you hear nothing. Is the voice still there? Yes. Are you hearing? No. Why? The phone is shut up. That's what has happened to us. Is God speaking to us? Yes. Are we hearing? No. Why? The phone is shut up. We shut off our spirit because we are wanting for somebody to lead us instead of going within our spirit to find the will of God. And I'm going to show you how it's done uh, between today and tomorrow. 
Now, let me just give you some general ideas so that we can proceed. There is a difference between hearing from God and self-motivation. Talking to yourself and God talking to you are not the same thing. All right. Now, I'll go back to the verse I read yesterday, and I'll use that to explain. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 6 to 8, it says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Note that. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiata the priest, Ahimelech said, Bring the effort here to me. And Abiata brought the effort to David. And David inquired of the Lord. I love David. He, didn't, he said, Abiata, thank you, thank you, thank you. Stand aside. I want to talk to God myself. Now, there are two things here that you would see that the Bible talks about. David encouraged himself in the Lord. But it doesn't mean God has spoken to him. David encouraged himself. You know, sometimes when we are in trouble, we encourage ourselves. Oh, you hear a word of encouragement. Oh, it will be well. Oh, you will overcome. Yeah, I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah, God will do it. God will do it. And, and all of that. It's all good, but it is called encouraging yourself in the Lord. The fact that you've encouraged yourself in the Lord does not mean God has spoken to you. So many times people go through difficulty and they say, well, I believe I can. I know I can make it. I know. Whatever. No oh, matter what. Make up my way. My life is in. Yeah. It is called encouraging yourself. All right. Now, it, the New Testament talks about it. It says... In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 21. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things to the Father in the name of the Lord. Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now, many times when we are in trouble, this is what happens. You know, sometimes you are going through difficulty and then all of a sudden, a song comes from inside you and you begin to sing that song and you are encouraged, you feel strong, you feel like, wow, I will make it. Or the choir sings and you are encouraged. It is not the word of the Lord. It is what David did first. Encourage himself in the Lord. Now when you are in trouble, it's good to encourage yourself in the Lord. Quote scripture verses to you, yourself. And um, you know, sing hymns and all of that. But that is not the voice of God. The two different things. Encouraging yourself in the Lord. And now after David had inquired, encouraged himself in the Lord, then he said, bring me the effort. Now I need proper guidance. I'm moving from self-encouragement to guidance. Now, as you seek to know God's will for your life, you have to always be able to distinguish between encouraging yourself in the Lord and hearing from God. They are not the same. Now, if you are in trouble and you come to me and I say, oh, sister, it will be well. It is not that says the Lord. I have encouraged you. But after I've said it is well, it will be well, you have to go and hear from God. Because if you take my encouragement as the word of God and say, well, pastor says it will be well, so it will be well, you will miss God. Because it is not just about encouragement, it is about hearing from God. So spiritual song, hymns, inspired teaching is okay. But David inquired of the Lord. Now I'm going to show you a New Testament example of how God speaks to us and the systems and how they play. Now somebody's going to ask, so um, Pastor, are you saying that there are no prophets in the New Testament, they are prophets. They are prophets. God calls prophets now. The New Testament prophet is not the same as an Old Testament prophet, and I'll explain it very soon. But it's called prophet. 
prophet, prophet. But prophet is not the same prophet. The New Testament prophet is not the same. Does God use prophets? Yes. What does he use them to do? I will show you. I'll show you soon. So go with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. From verse 10 to 18. And tomorrow I'll go a little bit more into that. Today I won't go too far because we're going to pray. But tomorrow I will expand this and give you the guidelines to hear from God. My desire is that after this Greater Works Conference, each one of you will leave here with a certainty in your spirit to know when God has spoken to you. Because believe you me, when you are in trouble at 3 a.m., I won't be there to help you. No prophet will be here there to help you. When you are stranded in the Sahara Desert, you will be there alone. You have to hear from God. Yourself. Where would the prophet be? The prophet too, he has problems, you know. He too, he's believing God for his breakthrough. Acts chapter 9. This is the general way by which God leads us in the New Testament. I'll expand on it tomorrow. Acts chapter 9 from verse 10 to 18. It says, now there was a certain disciple at Damascus. This is after Saul had had his Damascus experience. A certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Note the phrase, a certain disciple. Certain, he's just a, a believer. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Arise, go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias said, Answered and said, Lord, I've heard many about this man, how much harm he has done for your, to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. And the Lord said to him, go, for he's a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles and kings, the children of Israel. For I'll show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Aeneas went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him said, brother Saul. The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. Now note the verse 11 and 12. The Lord said to him, Arise, go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Now, there is a time gap between the two revelations. Saul's revelation and Ananias' revelation. There's a time gap. One happened ahead of the other. So, when God is speaking to Ananias, that is what he's reporting to us. He doesn't report him speaking to Saul. So what he's reporting to us is he says, Ananias, go to A, B, C, D place. There's a man called Saul of Tarsus. He's praying and he has seen in a vision a man called Ananias coming to pray for him. So the vision of Paul happened first. The vision of Paul happened first. It's called what I call the direct word. God did not speak to Ananias first. Remember, Paul, at this time, is a brand new believer. He hasn't been a believer for months or weeks. But God wants to speak to Saul. He doesn't speak to somebody first. He speaks to the new believer first. And then goes to tell another believer what he has told the new believer so that the new believer would know that what he heard truly was from God. So there is what I call the direct word of God and the confirmed word of God. This is the pattern 
of the New Testament. It is the pattern of the New Testament. God will give you a direct word and somebody will come to confirm it. And tomorrow I'm going to show you clearly from the New Testament, from Jesus, from John the Baptist to Jesus, to the apostles and how this happens in the New Testament. You will find out it is very different from how it happened in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, you'll be sitting here somewhere minding your business. No clue. A prophet comes. That says the Lord. You haven't heard from God, but you can't. Because you are not a prophet and you are not a priest. You don't have Urim and Tumim. You don't know. So the prophet is the first one who announces the will of God to you. The prophet comes and says, That says the Lord. And then you believe the prophet. You are established because you, you, on your own, you have no way of knowing the will of God. So the first way people heard was from the prophet. In the New Testament, the first time you hear from God is not from the prophet. The first time you hear from God is when God speaks to you directly. And to help you, to help you to confirm that what you heard was from God, another believer may come and say, well, I was praying yesterday about this time and God said, I should come and tell you this. Now, if God tells you to do that you have to have the humility of knowing that you are not the initiator of god's word so for example if 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 i believe god has given me a word for you i should come to you and say listen i you know i sense in my spirit that you know uh god says he wants to do is abc in your life does it bear witness with your spirit now, if you say, I don't sense anything, I should have the humility to say, I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't hear from God. Maybe I'm presumptuous. Maybe I stepped ahead. Maybe I'm not even supposed to tell you that. Because you, I shouldn't be the first person to tell you that, says the Lord. The Holy Spirit living inside you is the first person to tell you that, says the Lord. The prophet then comes to say, Based on what God has already said, this is the confirmation. God spoke to me too about the same thing. And it's, it's in the New Testament throughout. I'll show it to you tomorrow. So every believer must have the capacity developed to hear from God. You must have it. The first time you hear from God should not be somebody telling you the will of God. If you are truly the son of God, you should be, or a child of God, you should first hear from God before any other person tells you what God is saying. That's the New Testament principle. Now, so what is the role of the New Testament prophet? I'll show that to you next, uh, tomorrow. And you see how prophets in the New Testament operated. It's so clear. God speaks to me, a prophet may come to confirm. Or God speaks to me, another believer may come to confirm. If a believer comes to tell me something, or a prophet tells me something, and I haven't been told it first, have the courage to reject it. Somebody say, what if, if I reject and, and, and God punishes me? God won't punish you. He's the same one who said he will speak to you first. <laughs> All right? Now, the only time that I can imagine that God, somebody else will speak to you first is because God has been speaking to you, but you've turned on the phone for too long. So, so then he has to break through protocol and get to you because you've turned off your, sis, your listening device. But if your listening device is on, you are the first person God speaks to. Are you following me? For you to be an effective Christian, you must live by this principle. Because you are going to make important decisions. And at every major step in your life, you must know what is God saying to me 
And that should not come to going to somebody to say, so, pastor, when you were praying for me, what did you see? I saw you when I was praying for you. I saw you. What was I doing? You were you. you I just saw you. My job is not to be the first to give you guidance. My job, if anything, is to be able to bring confirmation to what God has already spoken to you about. Now, to do that, just a few things. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27 says the spirit of man is a lamp of the Lord searching all the inner parts or inner depths of his heart. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord or the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord. That's in Proverbs. You say, well, but, but Pastor, you, you said it's, we, shouldn't, the, the, we should look at New Testament. So this is what Proverbs said in the Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament counterpart of what Proverbs said. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit, the spirit of the man that is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. God uses our spirits to guide us from within now for you to be sensitive to that you have to fill your heart with the word of God the word of God must dwell in you richly not Sunday after Sunday richly you must read the Bible because the word of God is going to be the voice of God to your spirit the word of God must dwell in you richly. You must be spirit conscious. You must stay conscious that we are spirit beings with a soul living in a body. The real us is a spirit. And we must pray in the spirit. Pray in tongues. Now, for many people, praying in the spirit is autopilot prayer. Autopilot prayer. So, Shall we pray? I'm totally disengaged. And you ask him, what have you doing? I'm praying in the spirit. No, no, you are mumbling. There's no consciousness on your part of what you are doing. Now, in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. And then he finishes. I finished praying. Can you imagine somebody calls you on the phone? He calls you. Hello, hello. And he starts talking. Hey, no time, no see you. Hey, you are good. Oh, hey, you are handsome. Oh, you are Talks by a show. No, rapid gun. You have missed you. Hey, you went to school. Hey, hey our schoolmates, have you seen them? Ten minutes. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't you think you would say, is he crazy? Is he crazy? You call me this time of the day and you just talk, 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 and you never give me a chance to talk back. That's what you do. Father, I'm here. Amen. God is looking at you and saying, Is he crazy? You talk to me nonstop for 30 minutes and you never stop one minute to hear what I'm saying to you back. Praying in the spirit is not a one-way journey to God. That's why Paul says, he who prays in the spirit must also pray that he has the power to interpret. Because as you pray in the spirit, you are speaking mysteries which you don't know of. God has to take those mysteries and begin to impart his will into your life. And you must pay attention to what happens after you have prayed in tongues. 
the greatest guidance I've had in life has come that way. Every major decision of my life since I was a teenager, probably from about age 19 till now, every major decision I've made has come through that way. Whether marriage, church, whatever decision, I have never made any decision in my life based on somebody giving me a word from God. Never. I've never done that. All my Christian life from age 19 up to now, my mature Christian life, I've never made any decision based on somebody telling me, that says the Lord. I've made every decision based on praying in the spirit and interpreting what God is saying to me and based on that having certainty of what God is telling me. Now, have I had people come and confirm something that I already know a few times? A few times I've been, sometimes I've been in a meeting and somebody gets up and give, gives a word and who has no clue, doesn't know me from Adam. And it's exactly what God said to me. I appreciate it, but it doesn't overwhelm me because I knew it already. If he didn't confirm it, I'll still believe it. But the icing is not bad. I have the cake, but if they'll put icing on it, I'll still enjoy the cake and the icing. But if they don't put the icing, I'll still eat the cake. Because the sure word God gives me is what he puts in my spirit. Not what he puts in the mouth of another person. But once in a while, God will let somebody confirm a word he has given to you. But whether he confirms it or not, you have to grow to the point where there is certainty in your spirit about your decisions. Now, do you think I've made good decisions in my life? I think I've made some pretty good decisions in my life. I've made major decisions affecting thousands and thousands of people. And all of that has been based on the same principle, the New Testament principle. I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Now, I started using this principle from when I was about 19 years old. Not when I became a pastor. It didn't trigger because I became a pastor. It started before I became a pastor. It's actually, that's how I knew I could be a pastor. I should be a pastor. That's how I received my calling. And every major decision. Nobody called me. Nobody said, that says the Lord. I am the Lord Jehovah. I am Elohim. I've called you. Men so terrible by name. No, 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 no. I'm just praying. I pray quietly in the spirit and I am silent and all of a sudden you know it's sometimes it's like is it myself or something else is it me is it my own brain deceiving me because the spirit of God doesn't force you he's a still small voice it's almost like a wind a breath and he said oh wow just this week, I was praying in the morning, just praying. And all of a sudden, the theme for next year. Whew. That's it. I just knew without it, because I've heard that voice so many times. I know his voice so, so many times. Now I am certain when he comes. read the Bible, the Bible says the Spirit of God stood by the window behind the house of Samuel, the room of Samuel, and called Samuel, Samuel. Now Samuel thought it was a, from the outside because he's not familiar with that voice. He goes to Eli. Eli, you called me. Eli said, hey, 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 we are still staying, staying close. I didn't call you. Three times Eli realized God is speaking to him. It's like a breath. And a powerful thought just. That's it. Now, do you make mistakes? Yes. It's like learning to walk. You will fall sometimes. There are times when I am very sure God has spoken and then it, it wasn't God. It wasn't God. Now, how do I know it wasn't God? Because the decision didn't work. And I think just collapsed. I just said, wow, I made a bad mistake. 
It wasn't God. You have to have the humility to say, hmm, it wasn't God. In my genuineness and sincerity, I thought it was God, but the fruit, I just know this one, I, my mind played tricks on me. Now, when you start listening to God, it happens. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong, sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong, then you get it more right, right, and then one wrong, then right, 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 then one wrong, then right, 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 and then you get to the point where it's more right, 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 because you begin to eliminate the wrong voices. You have to learn to hear from God. You say, Pastor, but I'm just a new believer. Well, Paul, Saul was a new believer too. He didn't say, I'll pour out my spirit upon mature believers. He says, upon all flesh. Each one of you, God speaks to you in all the major decisions of your life, the important decisions, marriage, whom to marry. Now, you wouldn't hear a voice that says, I am the Lord, marry John, marry John. I, the Lord, I'm telling you, marry John. No, you wouldn't hear that. You know, normally when it comes to marriage, I tell people, you know, it's a very tricky one because sometimes your heart goes before the Holy Spirit. And once your heart engages the person, you fall in love, believe me, you won't hear from God again. <laughs> because you encourage yourself in the Lord. Anytime you are praying, you are praying, praying in tongues because you already, already love John. You're praying, praying, praying. Say, I am the Lord. I'm the Lord, my daughter. Marry John. I'm the Lord, my daughter. No, that's, that's, you, are, you are joking with yourself. You are joking with yourself. Because your heart has already taken flight. But when you are not decided, when your heart is not already fixed, and you start praying, you'll be amazed how God will guide you. That's how I married. Did I hear the name Joy, Joy? Joy, 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 son, joy, 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 is joy. No, I didn't hear. I didn't hear any name. I didn't hear. I saw a face. I saw her. Not in the spirit, in the flesh. <laughs> I saw her in the flesh. You remember when Samuel was going to anoint David. And he, he, he thought, you know, one of the brothers was was, was the, the one and he's getting ready to anoint and God says no God then he says well last one let's wait let's hope this one is right and the Bible says the moment he saw David the spirit of God said that's the one now did God speak to me before no I saw that girl she was beautiful nice I liked the face and I heard that's the one that's the one. That's the one. And I've never regretted it. Never regretted it. That's the one. Now, did I hear it like my heart is shaking? Boom, boom. That's the one. No. It's like, it's like, it's a just, you know it. Somebody, how do you know? You just know. You just know. That's the one. Because Logically, that may not be the decision you make, but you see her and shh, that's the one. Settle. Waited a few days, started making beehives, you know. Because one says, God says that's the one, you have to start moving. <laughs> so start moving. Sister, how are you? Sister, what is it? God bless you. Sister, 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 sister. <laughs> because we watch and pray. Once God speaks, you have to take the step. So start moving, start moving, start moving, start moving. Then one time, pop the question, and it worked. It worked. The interesting thing is later on, you know, when I got to know her and we married, and so, she also told me the same thing happened. In fact, about the same time when I heard she's the one, she also heard he's the one. About the same time. And she thought, that's crazy. How can I, because I was pastor then, how can I go to a church and say I'm going to marry the pastor? It's crazy. I'm in the flesh. She says she was rebuking it, but that's the one. And she didn't know how to make it happen. How's that going to ever happen? I don't know. 
So, Saul, Ananias. Saul, Ananias. <laughs> the Spirit of God says to Ananias, there is a man on the street called so and so. He's living in this house. This is his name. He's praying at this time. And as he's praying, he's seen a vision that a man called Ananias has come to pray for him. Now Saul doesn't know Ananias. Ananias doesn't know Saul. But God is a matchmaker. He knows how to speak to both. You have to be confident in the leading of the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer, God wants to speak to you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to you. And he may use other people to confirm it. But even if it doesn't happen, he will still speak to you. Amen? Amen. Now, tomorrow I'm going to continue and I'm going to give you more tools on how to really be led by God. I'll show you more examples from the New Testament and then we're going to pray. Tonight, we're going to pray. I know you have needs and you, have, you need breakthrough. Who doesn't need breakthrough? Everybody wants God to do something great, especially since it's greater works you want to break through. But I just sense in my spirit that I should pray with you and lay hands on you and pray for this one reason. That from today, the spirit of God within you will be activated with your spirit. And the voice of God will become clearer to you. If there is anything you need most as a believer, this is it. That you will know the will of God. That you would know how to wait on the Lord. That you would know how to hear from God. Not in an arrogant manner, but in humility. Hear from God and know this is it. And follow that conviction by faith. So I want to come into that agreement with you for a spiritual activation in your life. Every other voice that has spoken to you in the past that is not of God, I come into agreement with you as I lay hands on you, that voice will cease. You will not hear any demonic voice. You will not have nightmares. You will not have hallucinations. You will not be mentally disabled. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit will make himself real to you. That you'll be able to declare the word of God. That you will be able to hear from God. That you'll be able to see the purposes of God. It doesn't mean that every time you're walking, you'll be seeing things. You know, please. That's not how it works. I don't, I don't, who, who wants that life? You're walking, hey, pastor, did you see? I just saw... Do you see the two people? When you are in that state, you need other help. <laughs> you need other help. The moment you start seeing, did you see Jesus is just walking? And I, do you see Mary fetching water over there? Hey, 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 hey. That needs special attention. You are going off. But when we say that a person sees, it's also a perception. It's a perception. I'll teach on that a bit tomorrow. It's a perception. Once in a while, you may see a vision. Once in a while, you may experience something. I haven't seen visions in my life. You know, sometimes we read the Bible and you think, oh, when the moment Ezekiel closes his eyes, he sees a vision. Or Daniel shuts his eyes, he sees a vision. The ministry of Daniel was for 70 years. Spread those vision over 70 years. He wasn't seeing vision every time. If you see vision every time, you'd be unproductive. 
Can you imagine you are sitting at Tesco, you are working, you are, somebody is buying something, you are keen, and then, oh, you are caught in the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be fired and that will not be a persecution that will be a right management decision you can't be caught at the cash register being caught in the spirit no I'm in the spirit I see the heavens open <laughs> but I'm going to agree with you tonight that you will have a visitation of God that God will touch your life I'm believing God with you tonight that the presence of God will be so real in your life. You're going to, you, you're going to sense God's power so real. You will, it, it's almost going to be like, he's a friend. He's there. You will know he's there by my side. And he speaks to me and I hear him. You will not be confused and your mind will not be hijacked by any demonic power. I'm going to try as much as possible to lay hands on everybody that is here. For some of you, beyond what I have said, you are believing God for something else. And it's okay to add to what I have said and believe God uh, for something else. The, the woman with the issue of blood, Jesus didn't set the agenda for her. Jesus didn't say, come and touch me and you'll be healed. She said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment... I will be healed. Now, there are some of you who say, yeah, you want to lay hands that I'll be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. But in addition to that, I also have this issue. And if you lay your hands on me, there will be a solution. Because laying on of hands is not magic. I don't have magical powers to change your problems. We work by faith. And faith works in agreement. We work in agreement. So I join my faith with yours tonight. If you desire healing, there will be healing instantly in your body. If you desire deliverance, there will be deliverance instantly. If you desire financial blessing, there will be a miracle dispatch on your behalf. Because you have to set the agenda and say, as I go for this laying on of hands, when the moment his hand touches me, I receive that. Sensitivity to the Holy Spirit and a, B, C, D, based on your own desire. So I have set an agenda that the Holy Spirit becomes real to you. You also, in addition, set an agenda that as you are being ministered to, the power of God will move over your life. Tonight, there will be a harvest of miracles. 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 There will be, there will be, there will be, there will be a harvest of miracles. There will be a harvest of miracles. A breakthrough is going to happen in your life. There's going to be a shattering. There is a shattering. There is a shattering. There is a breaking forth in the name of Jesus. There is going to be a harvest of miracles. There's going to be a deliverance. There's going to be power released in this place. Lift up your hands to God. And begin to talk to him and believe God. Just set your agenda with God. Maketeri inderebosaya. Makitori iribosita rabaka. Reboshata kabayosa. In the name of Jesus, we compel every negative situation in your life to leave you now. In the name of Jesus, we compel demons out of your life. We compel forces of evil to let you loose in the name of Jesus. I compel every demonic activity, harassment around you to cease now in the name of Jesus. I compel it. I compel it. I compel healing in your body. That tumor is dissolving now in the name of Jesus. That blood sickness is changing now. That cancer is reversing itself now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I release, I release a repair of your body, a repair of your body, every organ of your body, your kidneys, your kidneys, your liver, your stomach, your intestines, your reproductive system receives impartation right now. In the name of Jesus, there is a system correction. 
There is a system correction taking place. Talk to God. Talk to God. Set your agenda. Set your agenda with God because tonight will be the night. For those of you who are watching by TV and who are watching by live streaming, tonight is a night God is reaching out to you wherever you are, behind your phone, behind your iPad, behind your computer, wherever you are. The power of God has no distance. We release virtue to touch you. We release virtue to touch you. Kabo Shandarabakoya. The Lord assured me before I came to this service that he's going to stretch forth his hand. He's going to stretch forth his hand and touch people. He said he's going to stretch forth his hand and touch people and heal many and deliver many and set many free. He's going to stretch forth his hand and supply your need. He's going to stretch forth his hand and give you the desires of your heart. He's going to stretch forth his hand. He's going to touch you. Heaven is reaching out to you. Heaven is reaching out to you. Heaven is reaching out to you. Pray, pray, pray. Call on to the Lord. Call on to the Lord. Pray and say, Lord, stretch your hand and touch me. Lord, stretch your hand and touch me. Lord, stretch your hand and touch my stomach. Lord, stretch your hand and touch my womb. Lord, stretch your hand and touch my finances. Lord, stretch your hand and touch my marriage. Lord, stretch your hand. Lord, stretch your hand. Deliver me, O oh Lord. Stretch your hand over my life. Stretch your hand over my children. Stretch your hand over my son. Stretch your hand over my daughter. Stretch your hand, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Just pray, pray. God is stretching forth his hand. The hand of the Lord is outstretched tonight. The hand of the Lord is outstretched tonight. Kamanese Briosta la Bashita Rabakosa. Manderi and Robosika Briata Saba Riondo Reboshika. Paro de Beria Ende Rebosiki Ada Raboshakaba. Reke Boshanda Rabosaka Bayeta. Rebo Sanda Raboshakabaya. Iriba Babadori in the Reboziki Adaraba. Robo Sente Rebekea. Oh Lord, stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand, Lord. Stretch forth your hand, Lord. Stretch forth your hand, Lord. Speak to your people. Open their spirits up. Open their mind. Open their heart. Open their eyes. Open their ears. Open their understanding. In the name of Jesus. Tonight there is going to be movement. God is going to shift you. God is going to shift you. Some of you are stuck. You are stuck. God is about to shift you. There's going to be a movement in your life. There's going to be a shift in your life. There's going to be a turn in your life. There's going to be a release in your life. Call upon the Lord. His hand is stretched forth towards you. His hand is stretched forth towards you. Makabayonde rebo sheke bayanda. Ilabadori iribo sakaya. Rebonde rebababa soto robo shikabaya. Ikabayori iribababosa. Rebonda rababo shakabaya. Irababo takari and reba. Bado varika bayori. Beseata rabasha. Reke bayanda rabaka. Stretch forth your hand upon your people. Touch their lives. Heal them, Lord. Deliver them, Lord. Oh Lord, heal the broken hearted. Heal the broken hearted. Bring peace to their homes. Bring peace to their lives. Lord, give them a second chance. 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 There are some of you who are looking at your life and you say, I've made a terrible mistake. I blew it. I blew it. I'm here just to announce to you tonight, God is giving you a second chance. There is restoration coming back to your life. What you lost, you are going to get it back. God is restoring to you. He's restoring joy and happiness. He's restoring favor. He's restoring it back to you. Just receive. Hey, the hand of the Lord is stretched forth. There is a second chance coming to you. 
There is a second chance coming to you. There is a second chance coming to you. There is a second chance coming to you. Maya reba ba yo reba ba bo shaka ba ya. Mende rebo si kabari ende rebo sha. Reka bandora ba bo satara kaboya. Reke bondara ba. The God of a second chance is visiting you again. He's visiting you again. You blew it, but He will make it right for you. You messed up, but He will make it right for you. It didn't work. But he will make it work again for you. He will give you a second chance. Listen to me. There is nothing wrong in your life that God cannot correct. There is nothing that is broken that God cannot heal. It may be a broken relationship. It may be you made a bad business decision. Whatever it is, you messed up big time. But tonight is a night of restoration. It's a night of restoration. God is giving you a second chance. There's a second miracle going to happen. There's a second miracle. A second miracle. A second miracle. And if you can receive it tonight, God will dispatch a second visitation. A second miracle. It will come back to you. Begin to talk to the Lord. Claim your restoration. Claim your restoration. Claim it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A second miracle. A second visitation. A second touch. A second touch. Lift up your hands to heaven, wherever you are, and say, Tonight, I receive a touch from God. I receive a heavenly visitation. I receive restoration. I receive abundance of the Spirit. I receive power. I receive glory. I receive beauty. I receive it in my spirit, in my body, in my life. Tonight, God will touch me. Tonight, heaven will touch me. Tonight, I receive a visitation from God in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for the pastors and their wives, pastors and their families first. You just come forward, and then after that, the ushers, please control the movement for people to come forward. I'm not going to lay hands five minutes on anybody. I'm just going to touch you. I'm going to touch you. I'm not going to push you. I'm just going to touch you. And that touch is a contact of agreement. It's almost like an electric switch. That when the two wires come together, power is released. When I touch you, power is released. Power is released. And whatever is gone wrong will be repaired in your life. Whatever is gone wrong will be repaired. Today there will be repairs. There will be repairs. No limitation. In the name of Jesus. 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 So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand by the authority of the name of Jesus. According to the leading of your spirit, that you stretch forth your hand and you touch everybody here. Let that which they have received rest upon them permanently. Let there be signs and wonders following by the anointing that has been imparted over your children. Let today be the beginning of a turnaround of change of of that miracle that they are waiting for and above all let your voice be clear to them let your spirit be real to them in jesus name and everybody say i receive it say i receive it say one more time say i receive it so go to three people and tell them from today it's going to be bigger better and greater in my life from today 
It's going to be bigger. It's going to be better. It's going to be greater. From tonight, it's going to be bigger. It's going to be better. It's going to be greater. In the name of Jesus, from today, Makabori Kebayanda is going to be bigger. It is bigger. It is better. It is greater. In my life, in my ministry, it is bigger. It is better. It is greater. Oh, shout to the Lord and give him praise.